Welcome in, everybody, to SWF Shootout. We are happy to be back, episode number seven, and we have got a lot going down tonight. We finished up the Gunslingers Tournament, and Leo in the Sleeves, surprising everyone, won that matchup. We are in Puma's hometown of Houston, Texas. Let's get started. Starting off shootout this evening, we have a great matchup. We have Brett Storm versus SDC. Now, Brett Storm, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Gunslingers Tournament, which was done outside of our normal programming. But Brett Storm was teamed up with Duke Zenda. Duke Zenda tap. Duke Zenda says he's done that to uh, protect the SWF Lone Star Championship. I don't disagree with that. But Brett Storm here wasn't having it. On top of all that, Brett Storm was not happy with his um, position, I suppose, here in SWF. So starting with the last pay-per-view, uh, Gold Rush, Brett Storm was on that card. He won his matchup. And then Puma said, you want your opportunities? Well, here you go. Brett Storm's on every card until we get to Southern Stampede. Now, since then, he has won every matchup that he's been a part of, that he's been in. So, a lot of craziness surrounding Brett Storm, but he is proving to us, to himself, to whoever he feels he needs to, that he can he deserves to be in the main event. That's what he's trying to do here. He's trying to get to the main event. So he uh, previously beat Elliot Collins. He beat uh, Ryan Adams at the Gold Rush pay-per-view. So he's on a roll. Brett Storm is getting there. Two and two, Mr. Storm is. Now we've only got three people that are undefeated outside of the Gunslingers tournament. We're not, we don't count that. We have Duke Zenda, who's your Lone Star champion at 4-0. Jay Wolf, who is the Maverick champion and the uh, um, the Lone Star contract holder, which is also the championship. He is 4-0. And then the Savage John Robb, who is 3-0. Now, I don't know where John Robb fits in all this madness, but he is up at the top. That is for sure. Brett Storm's opponent. He calls himself the hero of wrestling. And it is SDC. And we are pumped that SDC is here. SDC is currently two and one. He teamed up with Vice in the Gunslingers tournament, who he actually beat in episode two, I believe it was. Um, SDC lost his, he made it all the way to the finals against Duke Zenda for the Lone Star Championship match on that gold rush against Tyler Jordan. He made it all the way to the end and was defeated by Duke Zenda, and so now we're here. So SDC coming in to face off against Brett Storm to start shootout tonight. I'm interested to see how Brett Storm handles somebody like SDC. Ryan Adams uh, is currently 0-3 at this very moment. Um, Elliot Collins, who he also faced, is 0-3. So SDC's 2-1. I don't know how that's going to... We last saw SDC, though. Um, man, it's been, it's been a while. It's been episode three, I think, when he lost to Duke Zenda. So um, he's defeated James Frost. He defeated his uh, teammate in Fight and Flight and Vice in episode two. And then lost to Duke Zenda. So Brett Storm comes in with a little bit of momentum. So I'm interested to see how that is all gonna play out. But let's get going here. It is Duke, or excuse me, it is Brett Storm and SDC, and they go right after each other. No, man. SDC looking for that drop kick, and God, what a clothesline to the back of the head, upper shoulder area of SDC, throwing those big rights. And Brett Storm finally gets in there and breaks it up. And he takes out the knee of the high flyer. Probably a smart move. Taking out the knees of big men and high flyers. Probably a great 
a pretty decent strategy there. Oh, elbow to the midsection now by... No, oh, and a tornado DDT. Red Storm. Oh, I was going to say he's going to get kicked in the gut, but a reversal there from Storm. Smacks the wrist away. And a forearm shot. Look at this. Big clothesline. Puts Brett Storm down on the mat, and he rolls out of the ring as SDC taunts towards the crowd. Storm, though, right back in. Oof. Nice move there from the hero. He's got Storm's arm now. Ooh. Cranks it down, slamming it on the mat, quickly going for the pin. And just a one count, not even a one count. So a lot has happened in the SDC, or, geez, SDC, in the SWF Gunslingers Tournament, knees to the back by Storm. Look at the DDT. My goodness. So it all came down to Leo in the sleaze and Dogs of War, which is Ryan Adams and Jay Wolf. And Jay Wolf took on SDC and Vice pretty much alone. Ryan Adams didn't even get into their matchup, and they won. And it was done in under three minutes. I mean, it was quick. It was lightning fast. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how that's playing on the mind of SDC right now. Big spear from Brett Storm. My goodness. We saw that with Elliot Collins and a couple of spears. Oh, dodging the knee. Put Collins out. And here we've seen it before. The Falcon Arrow by SDC. And if he can get if he gets this crowd behind him, oh boy. This might be it for the two win streak of Brett Storm. And he catches a knee right to the face. One, two. And he that is it, my goodness. That big knee puts Brett Storm out of this matchup. And his two win streak comes winner, to an end. SDC gets the victory. And he is now tied up with Brett Storm 2 and 2. Very, very interesting. Your winner, folks, the opening matchup here, shootout, is SDC. Coming up next, folks, is between two men who are part of teams that have just been at it lately. And those two teams are the Sons of Carnage, Jesse Newman, and James Gaines III, and the Fallen Kingdom, Bruiser Brad and Malcolm Black. But tonight, it is a one-on-one -on -one matchup between these two teams. Only one person, Jesse Newman, is making his way to the, the ring without James Gaines. And I'm wondering how these two teams are going to manage. You know, pretty much doing everything together. Um, Jesse Newman and uh, James Gaines III, of course, were in that tournament. Uh, Jay Wolf, or excuse me, um, Bruiser Brad and Malcolm Black, they faced off against Thriller in the Clutch, which is Jordan, uh, Tyler Jordan and James Frost. Fallen Kingdom won that matchup. Uh, Sons of Carnage actually had to face off against their fellow member, Ryan Adams, and Jay Wolf. So that kind of didn't play out very well for them as they lost in the first round as well. So um, the Fallen Kingdom was defeated by D the Dogs of War, Jay Wolf, and Ryan Riley. Sons of Carnage were also defeated by the Dogs of War. So these guys, they're kind of even. And uh, Malcolm Black strolling his way, making his way to the ring now from the back. Jesse Newman patiently waiting, if you can call that patience. And here we go, Malcolm Black, face paint and all. Hair not in the dreads and the ponytail. Not this time. Malcolm Black from the Fallen Kingdom coming down a, and just as Jesse Newman alone without his teammate Bruiser Brad. Now I'm not sure why these two uh, team members are not at ringside, but the even, the more even we can make these matches, the better. It's 
psychopath. He is a crazy person. Maybe it's all psychological. Maybe it's just all part of the games you play to uh, throw your opponent off their off their game plan. Malcolm Black using all of our damn budget in, in freaking pyro. Jeez. Come on, man. We're going to start charging extra just so you can have pyro. All of it. You're taking it all. <laughs> it's just Malcolm Black making his way to the ring. Jesse Newman steps out, giving Malcolm Black some room. But the fans are itching. Let's get it going. Black in his corner now. Jesse Newman up into his corner. The fans are ready. And look at the confidence in Jesse. The ref rings the bell. Center of the ring and oh, Jesse's gonna start things off with an eye gouge. Into the corner he go. The quickness of Jesse Newman, backbreaker. And now he's just blatantly choking Malcolm Black to the five count. And look at Jesse working on that arm. Drops it hard onto the mat, right onto that Blackwire authentic logo. The official apparel company for SWF. Nice neck breaker there. Check them out on Twitter. Those links are down below. A lot of new t-shirts coming out from Blackwire. And there's a lot of them that are a part of SWF. So head over there, check them out. Maybe pick one up. Nice drop kick there to the face of Jesse Newman. Oh, and shots to the top of the head. Oh, man. Nice job. Malcolm Black now. Oh, he's going to quickly try to end this. No, not even a one count. Jesse Newman says, get off me. And look at this. Hammerlock scoop slam. That's got to feel nice right on the shoulder. Kick to the head. Oh, taking Black down. And a shot to the back. These two men and their teammates embroiled in quite the rivalry right now. I wouldn't be surprised next week if we saw James Gaines taking on Bruiser Brad, but dear Lord, that's like David and Goliath. Gaines being quite small. Look at Malcolm Black here. He's got Jesse all the way up. Superplex to the center of the ring. Oh my gosh. What a move that was. And quickly Black goes for the pin and a one count only, which is quite surprising. And no, not, nice head scissors takedown from Malcolm Black. Malcolm Black working the arm. Look at how Newman's body is all bent up and he stomps on the wrist. My gosh. But Newman not ready to give up. A dragon screw sending Black to the mat. The crowd booing. Very loudly. Nice DDT though. One, two, and Malcolm Black kicks out at two. The fans in the front row giving Jesse the old thumbs down. Jesse's got him up. And a big cutter from Jesse Newman. That could put Malcolm Black away. One, two, no. Malcolm Black kicks out at two, but. That might have been all the strength he had. And a shoulder block. Uh-oh, maybe not. Maybe Black just playing a little bit of possum and a shooting star from the top rope. The ref get over there and start counting. And a two count. What a move from Malcolm Black. That was amazing. That was fantastic. He's gonna roll Jesse over into the center of the ring, stomping on the gut now. Look at it, just shots to the kidneys and a big one right to the side of the face before cranking away on the arm. 
Oh my goodness, really trying to, oh geez, and knees to the back. That's a lot happening in a short amount of time there. Black's gonna send Jesse into the corner. Oh, big elbow right as Black got close. Trading chops. Black's gonna send Jesse back into the corner now. Oh, now he's locking him up in the tree of woe. Not the greatest position to be in. Hung, hanging upside down. All the blood rushing to your to your brain. Oh, geez. Look at Malcolm, though. He's getting ready. Coast to coast. Big kick right to the face of Jesse Newman. And Malcolm Black's feeling that one as well. He's going to drag... Newman away from the ropes, away from the corner. Smart move there by Malcolm Black. And he goes down for the pin. Oh, so close. Malcolm Black hollering at the ref, wanting that three count. And a diving headbutt right to the chest area of Jesse. Oh, oh, knee to the midsection. Oh, man. Nice move there by Newman. Hangs Black up on the ropes. And now the trash talking begins. Newman's going to send Black across the ring in a drop toe hold. Face first goes Black. And Jesse gets down for the pin. Very close to the ropes there and a kick out at two. Newman. Oh. Went for a huge chop. And a float over neck breaker center of the ring from Malcolm Black. Look at that. A small package from Jesse Newman. The ref down to count and a two count. Holy cow. Jesse almost stole this one. And he flips that arm over the shoulder and drops Malcolm Black down with a DDT. Still another two count. Wow. These guys really going at each other here, representing their teams. Oh, diving Centon from the top rope. And again, he's going to go back up top, and that means we might be able, we might be ready to see the double foot stomp. That's it. He quickly back over. One, two, three. Oh my gosh. The Scottish bastard is not ready to give up. He does not want to be pinned in this matchup. Stomp by Jesse. Ooh. Breaking the boots across the face of Malcolm Black. And now Black's being tossed into the corner. A chop followed by a drop kick right to the side of the head. What a matchup this is already to start the evening here. Dodging the clothesline. And look at Black. Oh, face first. The reverse Olympic slam. Into the corner goes Jesse. Look at this. Chest first, rolling through it. German suplex and the bridge. One, two. Three, and that does it for Jesse Newman. Malcolm Black, what a maneuver to finish this match out. That roll through and the German suplex. Great job. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, he ducks it. Malcolm Black with a couple of right hands. And a clothesline sends Jesse Newman over the top rope. What a matchup between the two rivaling, rivaling teams. Is that a word? I just made it up. Um, Jesse Newman and Malcolm Black. Great matchup there. Malcolm Black getting the upper hand over Jesse at the end there. But as you can see, the arena is full of the red, white, and blue, and that can only mean one thing. Jackson Montgomery is in the building. And folks, 
As I said, we're going to be talking a lot about the Gunslingers Tournament, even though it is um, outside of our regularly scheduled broadcasting. Ebony and Ivory, Jackson Montgomery and Omari Williams. Omari Williams did not want to be a part of this team. Jackson Montgomery, who happens to be from right here in Houston, Texas, where we are tonight, was all about it. He, he was geared up and ready to go. You see the red, white, and blue. You see the mullet. You see the short shorts. You think the worst of Jackson Montgomery. You see your average southern just imbecile. No, he's not. He might be southern. He might be dumb. But the man is liked by everyone in the locker room and is one of the more passionate people here in SWF. Ebony and Ivory faced off against Hades and Lord Draven. Darkness Falls in the first round of the Gunslingers Tournament. They got the victory there and went on to face Los Welsh, another team that didn't want to be tag team together. Uh, Alex Corzo and Mason Foster. Ebony and Ivory won that match. In the semifinals, they faced off against the team that would eventually go in and become the Gunslingers champions, Leo and the Sleeves, Leo and Leo McKay and Sebastian Abbott. So Ebony and Ivory, they had it going on, man. That is a hell of a team, and I was uh, Puma was able to talk these guys into staying together. So we will see more of Ebony and Ivory. Making his way to the ring is another person who has been in SWF for a couple of years and when what we have seen from him already this is Zach Graves and what we've seen from Zach Graves already he was part of that Freaks versus Faces match where the Freaks won Zach Graves, Draven, Kid Hades and Evelyn Reeves they won that matchup so I you've got a crazy team just right there Zach Graves was part a while back um, of SWF a couple of years ago when we were elsewhere. Now he, he made his way back. Zach Graves uh, did wasn't was a part of a fatal four-way matchup way back on episode two where the Savage John Robb was uh, won that matchup, but it was John Robb, Kid Hades, and these two men, Zach Graves and Jackson McCann. So we're gonna see if there's any animosity if you want to call it that, uh, between these two men as we get going here. And there's Jackson. Always got to be in the light, even if there's only a little bit of light to be had. go it is Jackson Montgomery and Zach Graves let's get this thing going the bell rings center of the ring they meet up and Jackson starts things off with a huge spine buster grabbing that mohawk and a headbutt to Graves but Graves takes the legs out from Jackson my goodness just the sheer oppositeness, if I can say that, of these two men, Jackson and Zach. Just Zach is like the farthest end of the spectrum where Jackson's on the other end. Jackson, a fun-loving, a America-loving, Southern-living, USA-chanting, beer-swilling American. And Zach Graves, the underworld, underworld's reject the I don't even know what else to call him the sinister one look at the fame esser that what a move that from Jackson catching Zach off guard and just headbutt after headbutt now in a Samoan drop nice job there from Jackson Montgomery now Zach Graves is one and one Jackson Montgomery also one and one the one loss was in uh, the Fatal 4-Way, where John Robb won that matchup. 
Jackson Montgomery's, oh. Across the middle rope down, and now look at him. Look at this. He's biting him on the hand. Jackson is a psychopath. Jackson Montgomery defeated Ryan Adams on uh, episode four. So these guys are even, oh, slamming into each other. Nice move there from Jackson, one of my more favorite moves. Oh, big shots to the midsection now. And an uppercut sends Zach Graves. Oh, no. Jackson's pointing the gun. And he's going to hook him up. Look at this. Oh, backbreaker. And really working over the knee, too. And he's going to go down for the pin. And just a one count. And Zach Graves is able to get out. Oh, dodging the kick. And Graves takes advantage. Look at that teardrop suplex. Nice move there from Graves. Jackson with a kick to the midsection, though. Oh, boy. We saw this quite a bit in the Gunslinger Tournament. He's swinging folks around the ring. Big chop right to the base of the neck. And, oh, he went for the spear. And Graves was able to reverse it. And a oh, gut buster by Sinister Zach Graves going for the pin. That uh, spear from Jackson would have been the turning point. Nice reversal there. Uppercut, though, from Jackson. Oh. Oh, my goodness. What a suplex that was. And now... Uh oh, I was gonna say Jackson's in control. Commentator's curse, as always. Face first goes Montgomery. And now Graves is in the corner. Oh geez, what are we gonna see here? Look at this maniac. Oh my gosh. Waiting for, look at him. He's got Montgomery in a bad position. Sister Abigail from Zach Graves. He's going to drag him away from the ropes. Down for the pin. The ref can't figure out where to go. A two count only. Wow. The mind games from Zach Graves. I don't know if you want to see that coming at you upside down. Or even front facing for that matter. Jackson working the arm and a big... Shot to the face of Montgomery, busts him open. And a big suplex there, but that gloved arm of Zach Graves has cracked Jackson Montgomery open. And he just cracks Zach's back with that one. My goodness, that headband though, probably does a lot to uh, mask the blood or soak up the blood. Face first again goes Montgomery. Oh, man. And a quick pin here with a bleeding. Wow. Not expecting that. But Jackson Montgomery busted open. Lays down and gets the one, two, three from Zach Graves. And it's interesting to say the least. I was not expecting to, the, to see the three count there. But Zach Graves, ladies and gentlemen, is your winner against America's sweetheart, Jackson Montgomery. Here we go, folks. We have got one half of the Tag Team Champion and one half of the Gunslingers Champions. As you see that around his waist, he is the Sleaze in Leo in the Sleaze. This is Seb Abbott. Now, he was previously the Maverick Champion, which is currently held by Jay Wolf. Now, these two guys are not done dealing with each other over the Maverick Championship.
championship, which makes this so much more interesting. As I mentioned during the Gunslingers tournament, we've never had a dual champion in SWF. Now, Jay Wolf currently holds the Maverick Championship and the Lone Star Contract uh, briefcase, which are one and the same, where he can use his or, or he can use his status as the Maverick Champion to cash in, if you will, a shot at the Lone Star Championship. And when he does that, win or lose, he gives up the, the uh, Maverick Championship and a tournament will ensue for that title. So, currently, these two guys, as I said, they're not done over the Maverick Championship. Jay Wolf had the opportunity to become uh, one half of the Gunslingers champions, but was defeated here by Seb Abbott. So, as we see this roll out, and by the time Southern Stampede gets here, we might have our first ever double champion if Seb Abbott regains the Maverick Championship from Jay Wolf. Who knows if that's gonna happen? Jay Wolf's a beast, and he's currently on a pretty decent win streak as he holds the Maverick title. Lance Romance strutting his way down to the ring. He is teamed up with newcomer Daniel Storm in the Gunslingers Tournament, creating Tropical Storm Romance. And I'm interested to see how that plays out because Daniel Storm, nothing like Lance Romance at all. Nothing at all. But these two guys um, know each other and have uh, teamed up elsewhere. And SWF thought it pertinent to bring in Daniel Storm and have him team up with Lance Romance. Now, Lance and Daniel Storm lost to the Rock and Rap Connection, which is the Savage John Robb and Ryan Adams. One tag team. I am so excited to see they got together. Um, so we'll see how all these teams mingle in here to shoot out as we come in from the Gunslinger Tournament. But Lance Romance here is taking on former Maverick champion and current Gunslinger champion, Seb Abbott. Let's get it going. Now the last time we saw Lance Romance, he faced off against, oh, against Mason Foster uh, in the last episode where Foster ended up getting the victory there. Now Seb Abbott hasn't had the, the best go. He lost to Jay Wolf um, at Gold Rush, and then he was in a tag team with Alex Corzo, where he lost uh, way back in episode three to Thriller in the Clutch. So Abbott, uh, since we're not counting Gunslinger wins and losses, just as wins and losses here on shootout, Seb Abbott not having the greatest go, 0 and 2. Lance Romance, 0 and 3. So, one of these guys is gonna pick up the victory here tonight. We're gonna see who that is. Shots to the midsection now by Lance, and he rolls out of the ring, which is interesting. And he is not happy with himself. Seb Abbott, always happy with himself, regardless of what's going on, because he is Australian sleaze. He doesn't mat. He doesn't care. Win, lose, draw. The power goes out. He uh, koalas invade the, st the arena. He doesn't care. He doesn't care at all. Big flapjack to Lance on the outside there on that rubber matting. And now he's got Lance up, face first into the apron. The ref's at six, and now seven and Seb's gonna get this match back into the ring. Stomping the lower back of Lance. Oh gosh. Big shots and a leg drop across the throat of Lance Romance. Lance, a uh, part of SWF for quite some time. Seb Abbott started out way back in PWA under the name Michael Addison. And a lot has changed in his life for him to become Australian sleaze. That's for sure. Into the corner and a big clothesline. You can see Lance gearing up for that one. One count as the ref dodges out of the way. Man, Lance really geared up for that clothesline, really winding it up. And a low blow. The ref 
just disgusted in what he saw there. Michinoku driver and the pin. You don't see the pin too often after the Michinoku driver, just a two count though. And Lance rolls outside the ring again and Seb chases after him. This match could literally go anywhere and Seb Abbott is gonna go there. There's nothing off limits to Australian sleeves, that's for sure. Big chop, no, blocked by Lance and a big right hand. Oh, going for a throat chop. Seb's gonna send Lance back into the ring before the ref gets any further in the count. And the former Maverick champion, oh, just lights up Lance with a clothesline from hell. And a quick one, two, three. Your winner, Gunslinger champion Seb Abbott. The clothesline from down under. Swings hard. And, oh boy. You know what that is? That's Jay Wolf. And Jay Wolf from behind. And geez, takes out Seb Abbott. These two guys are far from over and dealing with that Maverick championship. Here we go, folks, the main event of the evening. And as the lights turn out and the stage area turns green, that can only mean one thing. It is your Lone Star Champion, Duke Zenda. Oh, here is SDC, though. What is going on here? Duke Zenda is supposed to be taking on the savage John Robb here tonight but it is interrupted by SDC oh oh big knee to the face of the champ and a tornado DDT on the stage my goodness what in the world has gotten into SDC who knows but he is taking it to the champ right now the savage John Robb has got to be disappointed John Robb and Duke Zender undefeated. This has been a hell of a matchup for both of those two gentlemen. And SDC comes out here and is just putting the screws to Duke Zenda. Duke's got to come out on top, I would think, right? Down the ramp he goes. The Lone Star Championship stays up on the stage. Duke is still in his jacket, for crying out loud. SDC has already been out here tonight. And look at Duke just... Making his way to the ring area. And in he goes. And he is telling him, SDC, you don't belong here. You've already had a match tonight. And SDC lights him up with a DDT. I, I think that's it, folks. We're going to have to pick this up next week on another episode of Shootout. <laughs>